Hi, I'm Samer Forsley, VP of Marketing at Pythian. And I'm Alex Gorbachev, I'm a Chief Technology Officer at Pythian. For the last little while, we've been talking to a lot of IT executives about big data and the question of ROI keeps coming up. It actually reminds me of the early days of social media when you know, people were asking marketing execs, what is the ROI? And I'm not sure we ever answered that question, to be honest. But today we're going to give you a couple of ways of evaluating the ROI of big data. And uh, if you look at the big data deployments, you can actually classify them or group them in a couple buckets, I'd say. Uh, one of them is then when you look at your, to improve your uh, operations, let's say IT operations, and then you deploy the big data platform to reduce cost of running it, which contributes to your bottom line in a favorable way. So that's the bottom line contributors. And another uh, a group of uh, big data deployments, when you want to say mine data for insights, which would then, when you commercialize them, contribute to your top line, which is a top line contributors, new revenue, new products to sell, and etc. So the first method of evaluating the bottom line contributor is actually net present value. So simply put, net present value is looking at all the benefits you are going to get from the project, whether it's revenue or savings, in today's dollars. And if it's more than what you spent, then the project is a go. And a good example of this is uh, data warehouse growth in uh, modern uh, uh, data world. And what happens is that if you have 20 terabyte data warehouse today, you know, when you start putting a new data in, in new data sources, uh, the data warehouse tend to not just grow by 20%, but triple and even quadruple like in a year or two. So instead of investing multi-million into growing your data warehouse infrastructure, what you could do is you could look at your existing data warehouse deployment and take some of the workload and shift it away from that expensive data warehouse and a more cost-effective platform such as Hadoop and do data ingestion and transformation there in Hadoop. And by that, uh, relieving, sort of uh, releasing some of your capacity in data warehouse you can use for growth. And instead of investing a few millions in growing data warehouse, you only invest couple hundred thousand dollars or something on that order of magnitude. And the great news about that is that you already had planned on that spend, so you're not adding or asking for new funding. All you are doing is reallocating actually a smaller portion of your spend onto a Hadoop uh, infrastructure. So the second way of looking at this is when we're looking at insight. Insight is tricky because uh, you don't know what the result is going to be. And so net present value method does not work because it cannot adjust or cannot compute uncertain outcomes. So the way to do this from a math point of view is called a real option. So what is a real option and who uses it anyway? So a real option is the right to acquire the value but not the obligation. So to give you an example, if you look at a gold mining company, before they send you know, all the staff and all the equipment to dig a gold mine or actually to, to extract the resource, they send a small team that actually samples different areas in the mine or in the field. And based on the results, whether there's no gold or there's some gold, but the cost of extracting it today is not worth it. We have to wait until the gold prices rise above a certain point. Or there's a lot of gold, let's get going. That actually um, you know, has, a, has an impact on when you actually undertake the project. Yeah. And uh, uh, the alternative of that in our sort of age of datafication is we mine data for insight instead of mining ours for, ground, for, for, for gold. So uh, what happens is that we don't know what the outcome of that insight is, whether it's commercial insight, whether it's actually a hypothesis then true or not. So instead of investing you know, $2 million into the building a new big data platform, hire the team of big data engineers, a team of data scientists and support personnel and etc. We can start with a smaller proof of concept, which is a much smaller scope, just like you build, do the sampling with a gold mine. And we can deploy, you know, $50,000, $100,000 sort of order of magnitude, uh, a small proof of concept in the cloud, let's say, when you can validate our hypothesis on a smaller scale, validate the insights and whether we are right or not in our assumptions. And after that, we can commit to a full deployment, you know, and invest another million or $2 million, whatever it's going to cost us. And we can actually do it in sort of gated way, increasing the scope every time we hit uh, a success and we pay for our uh, uh, previous investments. So today we shared with you two methods of evaluating big data projects. One, bottom line contributor based of budget you already have. The second one is looking at insight and how that might uh, change over time with proof of concepts and as you gain more, more uh, data. So if you have any questions on actually how you use these methods or on use cases on what is actually happening in the industry and what we see on a day-to-day -day basis, please contact Pythian and we'll be happy to chat with you. Absolutely.